Okay, good afternoon. Sorry for this little delay. My, my fault. <laughs> I was speaking with some of the speakers about very interesting, uh, the very interesting presentations that they are going to show you now. And then, uh, without any further delay, uh, finally we have uh, the speaker uh, from uh, uh, Andrew Show. It's okay, Andrew Show. Uh, he will speak about innovation, innovative applications of a smart meter. Uh, so he will speak first now, and then we'll continue with the program uh, similar to, to as, as you have in the in the paper of the program. Okay, Mr. Show, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Okay, uh, thanks for for being here. Thanks for giving me the chance to present here on behalf of Topscom, and thanks to Mr. Boon for introducing me. So uh, today I'm, I'd like to talk about the smart metering, um, and essentially the situation in China, and to give you uh, different points of view compared to the European market or the worldwide. Well, the European Union defined the smart grid as electricity networks that can intelligently integrate the actions of all users connected to it, generators, consumers, or that do both. The goal is to deliver energy in a more sustainable, economical, and secure way. Our company, Topscom, has been dedicated to the process of digitalization in the aspects of smart metering and PLC communication, providing products for the whole industry chain. We were founded in 2008, and it was also the time when the concept of smart metering and the smart grid started to emerge and popularize. Well, today, I would like to share with you what we think of smart meter and uh, what we have contributed to the digitalization of smart grid du during our 10 years of development, as well as uh, on-site operations, and also what our visions are for, for the future of smart metering. Well, smart devices or smart systems have been a buzzword in the techno technology world during the decade. In the smart metering industry, we consider that the word smart has a lot to do with data. Horizontally, the meter is smarter when it measures or receives more data or bigger data variety. And vertically, the meter is smarter when it involves more advanced technologies to process and analyze this data. In the past 10 years, China has replaced 450 million meters, which record at least 3,000 times bigger data volume than analog meters. Just imagine that by, by the year 2020, in a worldwide scope, the 980 million meters will generate about 414,600 petabytes of data per year. On another part, there's no doubt that analyzing all this data is a key for smart grid implementation, optimization, e efficiency, which can fundamentally improve the business model of power utilities. Here, we classify the data into the three types. We consider the information acquired from smart meters directly as raw data. This includes the values the meter measured, such as voltage, current, demand, harmonics, and of course, energy consumption and also other information like the abnormal events and alarms that the media reported to the utility. These data types are very valuable for data analytics, but in order to satisfy more business requirements in practice, we found that this fixed data type will be more, even more precious when analyzed in combination with other information, which we all believe to, to be the potential data in the second type. In other words, this data that cannot be directly collected from the smart meters, but processed and analyzed to some extent. The potential data that we have been taking advantage of as a list here could be the recognition of the transformer supply area, the detection of face or line connection, and meter terminals wiring status that I would like to explain later on. Well, the third type of data goes even farther to the data that seems relevant but not part of the power grid system or in some cases, the data that even not, re not relevant at first glance. This includes the, the utilities existing historical data. Of course, its use needs to comply with uh, the regulations and laws. And some 
other third party data such as weather, climate temperature, population, economy, financial records, mobile data, geographic data. This third party data is gaining more attention as as especially the utilities are experimenting with cloud computing and artificial intelligence. Well, let's let's check this simple diagram of power distribution. We see that the low voltage supply is transformed from the medium voltage power line and connected to a data concentrator. And uh, on consumer side, we have smart meters connected before the power line goes into the household. This information might seem apparent, but normally, what if uh, from practical experience, we found that it was rather hard to tell in, in actual on-site operations, which for example, which transformer is supplying power to, to a specific meter, and to which phase the meter is connected, and if the meter is connected correctly or not. Especially when, the, when there are multiple transformers located together, like in, in the first picture. This is an underground distribution room where we are using several transformers to provide energy to a, a comparatively large number of consumers. If you look at the second picture, Sometimes the low voltage distribution line is buried underground, which adds a difficulty for us to detect the actual wiring. And the third picture, you, you see even the power line is constructed overhead, but in some less developed regions, it's, it's just a mess. We, we don't see the actual wiring. Well, traditionally, we were assigning operators on site for mat work, like, but it was very heavy workload, and uh, sometimes uh, the efficiency was very low. You, you don't know where to start. This is why we need an automatic way to get this potential data. Well, at first, as an example, based on the power grid's characteristics, we are able to detect which transformer is supplying to a specific meter. This is very useful when multiple transformers are deployed together due to large amount of meters. Uh, I'll I'll give you an example. In the year 2016, we carried out a full inspection for an interesting commercial block where there are two transformers supplying energy for two buildings, about in total 200 uh, households and shops. Well, um, conventionally, the two transformers are situated on the ground, and each one supplies power to each building. So transformer A to building A, transformer B to building B. But we want to analyze the power loss, and there, there were problems. So we use the traditional tools that can send micro currents that can detect which meter is, is connected to which transformer, but it was not accurate. So with this technology, at last we found that, uh, we found that seven households from building A and 19 households from building B are actually connected to the transformer B, and the rest are connected to the transformer A. I don't know why, maybe the line, the material, so the next example, based on the characteristic of alternating current, we also detect the face information of the meter. 100% accurate. We have been using this method for a lot of on-site operation. Uh, and another one, it's also we use the meter's properties. We can, we can use this information to detect how the meter is connected in the cases of a reversed polarity or a phase reversal. For example, there were some cases that we find in some households, their lights are still flashing even, we, even if we switch off the power. This gives us the indication that maybe the meter is wired reversely. Well, we're exploring new ways to take advantage of the data that we're acquiring. And for, for this product, practical applications, we integrate them into the data concentrator. It's our solution. And the functions are totally expandable from the very basic PLC routing. At first, we can all the way adding up new applications as we are also venturing into the neural network technology to analyze the most efficient routes for the PLC communication. The meter reading efficiency will get further improved. What do we put into use? What do we put into practice the data that we analyzed? For example, power loss. I think I remember numbers that the annual power loss in in Mangli would be 96 billion or 9.6 billion. I don't remember clearly. 
uh, worldwide every year. The technical and non-technical loss of energy could be classified in the transformer loss, which means the loss in transformer error, and the loss on the distribution line or phase, and the loss caused from incorrect metering. These are just what we classified using the technology that I said just now. And uh, by visualizing the loss by transformer or by meter, we will be more effective by reducing the losses. This data can also be used for the analysis of meter abnormality. For example, if you have tampering, the fault meter, the damage meter, or the wrong wiring, we, ha we will have events or alarms that reporting to our system, to our, the informatic system we provided for the utilities. Well, it can also be used for the identification of home appliances. It's not commercialized yet, but uh, we're doing pilots with this technology by analyzing the different power consumption patterns on different uh, machines. We developed algorithms to separate this load for more accurate power consumption detection, and it might also help to facilitate the demand side response. Well, this is a picture that I have a screenshot of our uh, power loss. This is about the abnormality event, and uh, this is a load profile analysis. And uh, in the last part, we have this. Uh, non-intrusive monitoring and load monitoring based on appliances types. We'll analyze the power consumption details of appliances. It will help us to reduce energy waste and uh, for better distribution planning. Well, the, at last, I'd like to share with you what we expect for the future of smart metering. For the first part, we're finding ways to visualize the data that we acquired or analyzed from, uh, from the smart meters we already have the graphs, diagrams, but we, we analyze the data. The most important part is to present them to the utilities and also to the consumer side. This is something we still have to improve. And uh, uh, another thing we want to do is to modulate the smart meter. How to explain this? One trend of meter developing is to add multiple functions. You add functions to the meters more and more, like, like the smartphones that we have now. But we're also thinking of the reverse, reverse direction. We can also modulize the meter to make the functions in different modules. So we can add this module, add this function. If you don't want to use it, you can just unplug this module. In this way, we have more expandability. And uh, if, if one module is broken, you don't have to replace the whole meter. Also lower the cost. So well, the last part, it's also important to forecast incident with the data that we have. And well, you know, it's not common for news such as transformer exploding or, or some damage. If we use data into good use, so we can pre predict them. Well, that's all my presentation today. If you have any questions, or you can ask me. Also, also our developers are here. Uh, Dr. Dr. Delft here, who developed this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you speak about all this so simply that it looks simple in, at some point, but you're talking about hundreds of millions yeah. of meters. You mentioned uh, that you are uh, or you have already installed 200 million. Is that the number of uh, of equipments? You mean in China? Yeah. In, in well, by your yeah, in China you have. In China we have 450 million. 450 million in Smart China. Smart meters. Smart meters. Okay. Till now, I think mm -hmm. the statistics is was from last year. Yeah. From last year. Yeah. And your company in this And uh, I was saying that half of the meters, over half of the meters are equipped with our PLC chips. OK. Yeah. OK, so we are talking about something developed for 200 million and something uh, a meter. Well, that's, that's amazing. I, I was uh, quite surprised one thing you mentioned, uh, this modularity of the yes. systems. Yes. Because I, I remember from some other sessions uh, last year mm -hmm. uh, of Landis and Gear, another company, they were yeah. mentioning about circular economy and all this issue about uh, not replacing whole equipments, but yes. only uh, putting the parts that are needed or replacing parts. So this is very interesting. How did you come to this solution? I mean, why? I mean, why did you decide to do this and not just manufacture equipments, uh, you know, block equipments and that's it? It's this like what I said just now, the two advantages that we have here. For one is expandability. What if we have new functions? We can add to them without changing the meter, mm -hmm. without changing the equipment. And for another part, if some, some module is broken, 
we don't have to replace the whole meter. Well, this also add revenues for, well, save the waste for, for the utilities, yeah. right? So we only have to do the data interfaces and we, we can develop some standards for also for other companies to develop these kind of modules that we can use or we can share. Okay. Yes. Another question for me, very interesting, is that you are you not only prepare the hardware, but you are also showing a lot of screens with e data. Yeah. This data are let's say all this management of data is for the all these uh, equipments that you are uh, participating in them or something, or or this is another service. Let's say this uh, curves of uh, assets or curves of. Yes. Uh, our products, are the uh, we provide products for the whole electricity chain, this um, MI chain. So. The, our software supports all the meters, the data concentrators that we produced. For all the 200 and something million meters, you have this information, let's say, or this curves? Well, it depends on the actual situation. If they, okay. mm -hmm. if they acquire our, if they use our uh, solutions, or if not. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's very interesting. But I would like also to leave the floor for other questions from the audience, if there's some other, there are some other questions about this uh, all these different uh, topics that they were mentioned here not so far okay thank you so much uh, okay. mr so uh, thanks a lot thank you if you're much. interested just come to our booth ak22 okay yeah. thanks a lot thank you yep. your booth is somewhere here correct is this here topcom yeah right there okay thank you very much uh yeah really these numbers is amazing, are amazing for for us. Uh, 300 million, wow. Okay, uh, now we have a really, I would say, really interesting presentation here. Uh, if I can open it. I'm doing something ro wrong. <laughs> the last moment. <laughs> I would like to welcome uh, from uh, Gas, uh, Gas de France, Mr. Vincent Pertuis, director of the Smart Gas Metering Project. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Francisco. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, so my name is Vincent Pertuis. I'm head of uh, the Smart Gas Metering Project in uh, France. And uh, after the mass rollout uh, in Spain, uh, we had uh, the presentation uh, in the beginning of the afternoon. Uh, we'll let you travel to France. Uh, I will uh, mainly focus on the rollout to date, the service provided to customers, uh, mainly natural gas consumption and uh, energy demand savings, but also the valorization of uh, GRDF telecommunication infrastructure, because uh, we use only a, a little part of the bandwidth and we want to uh, use it for other cases. Uh, before uh, going to uh, the detail of mass rollout, I want to uh, just uh, remind the three major goals of this 1 billion euro project for 11 million customers. Uh, so the project is based on the radio communication with the WISE technology, so 169 megahertz from the meter toward, uh, to the gateway. And then we have a communication by uh, GPRS and uh, or 3G between the, the gateway and uh, our IT system. So the first goal is to uh, improve uh, the quality of billing, to improve our processes of billing, because uh, we have a lot of claims now based on uh, bad quality of, of billing. 80% uh, of claims are related to a problem of indexes. Uh, real uh, indexes are just measured twice a year, and uh, now you will have a, we will be able to uh, produce exact billing every month. So the project uh, is a good and strong answer to this uh, problem of quality of billing. Second, uh, second goal is to increase uh, the, the energy management, energy management, uh, uh, energy savings. Uh, people will better know their energy consumption. Uh, they will have access to a platform, online platform, with day-by-day uh, -day consumption. They also will be able to transmit their consumption to their energy supplier with their consent. And the energy supplier or other third parties will be able to uh, provide services to help uh, consumers to reduce these uh, consumptions. And so uh, in the future, the use of daily data in accordance with, uh, of course, the respect of privacy 
will be a major stake to reduce consumption. The last goal, finally, is mainly oriented towards uh, gas uh, network. Uh, gas smart meter will be a first step towards a smart gas grid. Uh, will uh, reach uh, modernization and performance of the gas network. As you might know, we develop and more and more uh, biomethane injection plants, and uh, we need to equilibrate the production and the consumption. So that's why, to, with uh, smart, uh, smart gas meters, we will better know where we have consumption and we can uh, leave a space to uh, biomethane injection plants. Concerning the, the timeline of the rollout, so the third sort were in 2009-2010. Uh, we tested different uh, types of technology, all based on the radio solutions. So we have uh, conducted experiments with uh, so the WISE technology, 169 megahertz, but also with uh, 868 and uh, 433 megahertz technology. And by far, the best uh, results were achieved with uh, 169 megahertz technology. So very uh, reliable, very uh, stable. And uh, that's why we uh, oriented our choice uh, to uh, the 169 megahertz technology. Then between 2011 and 2013, it was time to uh, construct uh, the solution. Uh, we got uh, government approval uh, in 2013 and 2014. And we then launched uh, some uh, experiments and uh, a pilot phase during uh, 15 months. Uh, during the previous presentation, uh, uh, you, we stressed the importance of uh, having a different phase, experiments, pilot phase, before the mass rollout. And so we conducted uh, the experiments in uh, four areas of France uh, during uh, 15 uh, months for about uh, 160,000 uh, uh, meters equipped. Uh, it uh, gave uh, good, res good results. Uh, that was uh, a lot of uh, communication and pedagogical uh, approach towards customers. And that's why we got uh, the go for the mass rollout uh, early May 2017. And uh, we are now uh, in this phase of mass rollout uh, since uh, 18, uh, for, for, for 18 months. And it will last, uh, so the industrial regime will last three years now. So 2019, 20, and 21. Before a decrease of uh, 50% 2022. And uh, we plan to achieve the, the mass rollout early 2023. So uh, we have not fi finished uh, like in Spain, but uh, we are on, on the way. It's working well and uh, we uh, expect also to, uh, to finish on the timeline of 2023. So what about uh, the rollout and uh, what have been done during uh, 12 months? So, so far we have installed uh, 2 million smart meters on the field. It's going well. You have uh, now the projection of uh, what we tend to install uh, during the next uh, coming uh, years. So the, the industrial regime means uh, to install 2.4, 2.5 million meters every year during uh, 2019, 20, and 21. Uh, we also have uh, installed uh, on the field uh, more than uh, 3,500 uh, gateway. Uh, the target is uh, between 12 and 15,000, depending of uh, uh, how we can reach the meters with uh, the getaway. Uh, to do this, we have uh, 80, uh, sorry, 800 uh, technicians working on the field daily to secure this mass rollout. This means in uh, the industrial regime, uh, 10,000 uh, meters installed per day, 200,000 per month. And we respect the schedule and the cost so far. Uh, about radio technology, it's uh, reliable, it's simple, it works uh, well. And about uh, customer acceptance, uh, we have a good acceptance with uh, less, pos one, less of 1% of uh, refusal. Uh, because we have uh, always wanted to uh, apply a cooperative approach with uh, all the stakeholders. And uh, also the experiments led with the French uh, Agency for uh, Energy Saving shows that the results of uh, energy savings, so the second goal, are online or at, above uh, the business case. So now uh, where we want to stress uh, the cooperative approach, uh, it's uh, a key factor of success for the, the project. Uh, local stakeholders have a key role to facilitate customer acceptance. Uh, during the pilot in 2014, 
uh, we launch uh, dialogue committees with uh, look in the four pilotaries with uh, local energy agencies, landlords, customers, uh, customer representative association, local governments. And uh, it uh, helped a lot because uh, citizens sometimes don't trust uh, industrial, but they really trust uh, stakeholders like a local representative. The goal of these committees was to inform also the stakeholders of the possibility of uh, using consumption data to uh, achieve the, manage the, the energy saving objective. Uh, indeed, uh, thanks to uh, Gaspar uh, data, uh, the local governments and the public landlords will have access to uh, aggregated and anonymous data at the district level or at the collective housing building level. So it will help the local polity to reach uh, the energy saving target. So let's move now to the management of uh, data. Uh, gas distribution is a public service and we have to uh, comply, of course, with, uh, to fulfill the, the current regulation. And our role is really an equilibrium between uh, facilitating uh, access to data and also uh, ensuring the confidentiality and the security of data. It's a very key point in France. People are very sensitive to uh, the security uh, and the quality of data. Uh, you heard a lot about of, uh, data problems, but in France uh, we have uh, to comply with the regulation. And we are also controlled by the French National Commission for Information Technologies and Liberties. And uh, this is a real, uh, very strong uh, investment uh, for us. So in this regulation frame, what kind of data uh, uh, we provide? So we, we provide uh, mainly three kinds of the data. First is uh, open data, uh, available for everyone to share and to improve. These data are available online on our platform, uh, GRDEF. Uh, and the second kind of data is uh, aggregated data, uh, not online, but on demand. Um, people can ask for uh, data on uh, our online platform, uh, of course, with a narrower focus, excluding any uh, personal data. And the last uh, data that we provide are individual consumption data. So daily consumption for a customer. Each individual customer can have access to his uh, online platform. And uh, also with his consent, he can uh, give access to the data to uh, his energy provider or to a third party to uh, provide services and to uh, help him in uh, managing uh, his energy consumption. We now experiment this service uh, called ADDICT uh, for third parties uh, since uh, end of 2008 and the service will be fully available uh, be during the, the year 2019. I will now show you what kind of data uh, individual consumer can, uh, can see. Uh, you have just uh, on the picture on the left of the screen uh, the representation of uh, the online platform. Uh, customers will be able to connect themselves to this platform. Uh, this uh, platform is called Monespace GRDF. And they will have access to the daily uh, consumption, but also they can compare their consumption with uh, similar household. And they have uh, explanation of uh, the trends of the consumption with uh, outdoor temperature. They can also set some uh, alarms, uh, thresholds, and when the consumption is above the thresholds, they can uh, receive an, an alert uh, and what they can also connect uh, an external device to uh, the two plug uh, connection on the meter to uh, show online what is the consumption and to connect it to, uh, to a box. The monthly consumption are of course transmitted to the energy supplier for billing and uh, as I said with the customer agreement the daily data can also be transmitted to the, the energy provider. I told you the result of the, the experiments we have conducted with the French uh, Agency for Energy Savings are online with the business case or above. The business case was based on 1.5% uh, uh, reduction of the consumption and the experiment shows we are above with uh, results of uh, minus 5%.
of course, uh, we need to help a lot the customers. And uh, the stronger recommendation are for, to communicate and to support energy saving with uh, pedagogy to uh, accelerate the awareness of uh, new available data and uh, encourage the development of new services. And so also to uh, stress uh, the point of uh, security and confidentiality of data to inspire trust and uh, to guarantee trust to uh, individual customers. As I mentioned, GRDEV has launched uh, new services uh, called ADDICT, access to uh, individual data consumption by third parties. This uh, service uh, is uh, available through an application programming interface. And uh, you can see on the right of the screen all um, stakeholders interested in this kind of uh, services. You have, of course, uh, public institutions like uh, local energy uh, agencies, gas industry, local authorities, public housing landlords, licensing authorities, but also energy suppliers, and of course, uh, the customers. These actors are interested in uh, improving energy services uh, with, uh, for instance, more detailed analysis for better recommendation of control, uh, energy diagnostics for property management or building renovation, and also uh, data provision during a uh, call for tender. They're also interested in developing uh, new services, emerging new services, like uh, monitoring tool for uh, different fleets, and uh, energy platform for cities, individuals, or housing authorities. So as the technical solution uh, implemented with our project uh, works well and gives uh, complete satisfaction, so you can see uh, on the left the major benefits of uh, our project. Uh, we have a stable uh, solution up to uh, 2042 because uh, the last meters will be installed 2022 to 2023 and are designed to last 20 years. Uh, we have a good uh, radio performance. Uh, we can reach uh, underground objects, so a good performance for how to reach uh, objects. We, we ensure data security and privacy. It's uh, full uh, interoperability and uh, you have uh, both uh, directional connection. And uh, you can uh, have a modular approach of this uh, kind of technology. So a lot of advantages, a lot of benefits, and that's why we receive more and more requests to use uh, GRDF in radio infrastructure, so the new infrastructure with uh, the gateways, for uh, gas network needs, or also for uh, third party uh, customers for uh, smart cities. So for uh, smart gas grids, we can use uh, the infrastructure to monitor pressure, temperature, flow, this is very, very important for the development of biomethane injection plant. And uh, for smart need cities, a, there are a lot of uh, use cases, of course, uh, for uh, parking, to monitor boilers, uh, or other devices. That's why we have created a subsidiary in charge of sales of the, the bandwidth, uh, the bandwidth of 169 megahertz technology. And you can see on the right uh, the coverage of our network by 2021. Of course, this is not uh, all around France, but uh, we cover, we will cover almost 80% of the French population, where, where our population have access to the gas network. And we will develop uh, additional service an, uh, as an IoT operator. Our position is, of course, to develop a service like uh, communi connectivity, communication, network, and supervision, data management, uh, raw data or processing, and services. I will now move to uh, the, the context on the development of smart cities. Uh, as I mentioned, the use of 169 megahertz technology is very interesting, and it of the radio network offer very good uh, features. And there is also a huge demand to, of new solutions to address smart city challenges. That's why GRDF founded in uh, 2017 with our partners, Sagemcom and uh, uh, Suez Smart Solution, active in uh, water, smart uh, water metering, the WISE Alliance. 
Uh, the status is the following. We have now 4.5 uh, IoT objects using this technology. And we expect uh, more than 15 million by 2022, 4 million for water, and uh, as I mentioned, 11 million for gas. We are active in uh, 500 cities in uh, 15 countries. So uh, our partner, US Smart Solution, is very active also uh, at the international level. And uh, we have so far 40 members coming from uh, eight countries. Uh, the technology-wise can be uh, used as uh, can be self-operated or used with a third-party operator. And of course, uh, above a minimum device, uh, you have an interest to deploy your own communication infrastructure. And uh, for uh, decisions, uh, the total cost of ownership is a major decision-taking factor when selecting an IoT uh, technology. So last, as a conclusion, GADF has uh, developed a very wide and uh, unique expertise uh, and uh, managed one of the largest uh, gas smart major program. So we have a dedicated uh, team of experts uh, inside GADF and outside with our supplier, our partners. And uh, we can uh, help you regardless of the stage of your project and uh, to help you on the specific challenges you may be facing. So during the scope of uh, the project at the beginning. And uh, we can also offer uh, help during the rollout of the project. And we also can offer smart metering system uh, managed as a service. So for this, we have a uh, representative from our international uh, division. We also can uh, uh, show something about the technology. And uh, I invite you to join us on our stand, so all B, and uh, our stand is located uh, C50. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I'm ready to answer some questions now or during the panel session. So I think if I'm if I'm correct, you are developing the largest uh, uh, gas smart metering uh, yeah. in probably in the world. Um, uh, I, I was thinking uh, because you have a gas meter with a lot of uh, different uh, possibilities, let's say, and also you are developing this alliance for uh, ex exporting outside, let's say, France or outside the, the your area of influence now, but. Uh, this all, for example, the, the core, which is the smart meter uh, equipment, is you are developing also the smart meters or you are working with one equipment or several equipments? Because I see, for example, I remember Iberdrola was working with like nine different manufacturers. I know NL, for example, was with one. So what is, in this sense, the strategy? This is interesting. Yeah, the strategy of um, the supply chain and the specification is a, is a key point. I agree. Um, our step was first to test different kind of technologies, all based on a radio, so 169, uh, 868, 433. And then uh, we decided to choose 169. Uh, we defined our own uh, specific uh, standards. We launched a call for tender based on this uh, specification. And we have three suppliers for uh, meters. Uh, and we have uh, two suppliers for uh, getaway. So, we have a limited number of suppliers compared to what I heard from Iberdrola. I think uh, nine, but four were mainly active in your uh, domain. So I think the number of three or four suppliers for large objects is a good choice. And having two uh, less than three or four, it's a risk for your supply chain. Having more than four or five, it's difficult to uh, control, to manage. And uh, so three or four for a large number of objects is a good uh, thing, good position. Okay, and for the second question, and then I open to the audience, uh, for this uh, uh, network, or what's the, exactly the name of the network? Can you repeat the, uh, the name of the the name of the smart meter is Gaspar. Gaspar. Yeah. The name of the technology for radio technology, so is a wise technology standard. Wise technology. Okay. And. Uh, the project of the name is the Smart Gas Metering Program, so we don't have a specific name okay. for it. Okay, okay. Okay, so I would like to open to the audience if you have any questions about uh, all this presentation here. No more questions? Okay, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay, and now. Uh,
And now we have uh, another present, very interesting presentation. I would like to welcome uh, Alessandro Bertani. Bertani. Bertani, sorry. Alessandro Bertani from Cesi. Yes. Okay. Cesi. The floor is yours. Cesi. Yes, I'm here. I'm from Cesi, but I'm here on behalf of uh, uh, Meters and More Association. And uh, let's come back uh, to the electricity sector. And in particular, I would like to focus on the customers. So. Uh, we talked about about uh, we talked uh, in the previous presentation about uh, a lot of things, uh, but uh, as meters and more, we do not think that we have to deal with the, the customers only in terms of uh, their uh, um, uh, involvement, but we would like also to have the customer as stakeholders of these kind of activities. The customers uh, uh, in the last uh, years uh, and in the future, especially, will. Uh, play a crucial role for the electrical sector in our opinion. So uh, you know that in some countries they are called, they are recruited in some way in order to participate in the ancillary services of the network. In order to do this, in order to spread all over the customers this kind of, uh, of involvement, obviously we have to interface the customers in the proper way. Uh, meters and more stand for meters obviously, but also for more. And in this case uh, I'm talking about more how to involve the customer. First of all, uh, we have uh, to let the customer be aware of uh, their consumptions. And secondly, we have to motivate the customer. But how to motivate the customers? Uh, I think that uh, the best way is to make uh, their life easier. So they mm, couldn't care about the technology to be used in order to obtain the, the information. And this is the role of Meters and More. So provide them with a solution and let them uh, dealing only with the functionalities. Uh, the commitment uh, of our association, but I think that this is also the commitment of all, all the association, obviously, like Prime, like G3, like DLM, uh, and so on and so forth, uh, is uh, to uh, have open technologies and to have standardization, interoperability and certification of the products, uh, as well as, uh, obviously, uh, a solid and efficient uh, uh, communication uh, base. So. The last one, uh, obviously, is the uh, basis for all uh, the uh, development of, of this kind of project. But uh, uh, the openness, the standardization and interoperability will become much more important when we deal with the customer themselves. We heard about by the utilities that uh, they implemented the interoperability just to have uh, a better supply chain, not to, to be tied to a unique uh, uh, provider and so on. But when we talk about the relationship between the meters and the customers, so the final customer, we have to think that we could potentially have one different device for each customer. So they must be free to choose their device. And uh, in this case, we must be sure that all of them must be really interoperable with the meters uh, they are connected to. Let me come back a little bit uh, uh, to the uh, meters and more and uh, how it works. And then we will come back uh, to this topic uh, uh, that I mentioned before, the relationship with the customer. So uh, meters and more architecture is this one. So uh, we developed uh, many years ago uh, the protocol for the communication between uh, the concentrators and the remote control centers, the concentrators and the meters in field. And now we are talking about the interface between the meters and the final customers. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of words about the uh, fact that this is a technology that is working because uh, uh, meters and more time has been used since 2000 in the first uh, uh, installation of, of meters worldwide. And now we have uh, more than 38 million of meters installed in Italy, more than 10 million installed in, in, uh, in Spain in Endesa, uh, more than 800 installed again in Spain in Viesgo, 420,000 installed uh, in Romania, more than 300 uh, installed in, in, uh, in Montenegro and many other applications. So, I don't think it's necessary to spend uh, some other words on the fact that uh, it is one, I'm, I'm not saying the only one, but it is one of the technology that is working. It is a power line technology, obviously. So we, uh, we have three different uh, stacks, basically. Uh, meters and Morse can work uh, on power line, but it can work also on public network through TCP IP. 
and uh, we developed uh, also a conversion, uh, conversion layer towards the LMS cosm. So this is the so-called Smith protocol, vertically integrated up to the power line. And we have also another stack that is the, uh, uh, that is the, the stack that, is, that use also the LMS cosm. Uh, again, why and how to open uh, and involve the customer in such an infrastructure? This is the uh, normal chain, uh, let's say, the common chain that we already heard uh, in the previous presentations. So we know that the meters have been installed in order to let the utility to measure the customer's consumptions uh, and now also to acquire the profiles of the customers. But the meters can be exploited also in other way. If we have a gateway, an enum gateway, we can collect information from the meters. And I'm not talking only the load profile, but we could also interface the meter with a, a higher sample rate in order to allow, for example, some other application at customer side. Uh, this chain is a perfect answer to the needs of the utility. But we do not know what could happen here. For example, if you want to have a clear picture of, the, of, of your uh, consumption, I mean, uh, uh, if you want to disaggregate, uh, I heard uh, from the Chinese colleague that uh, they perform something like this. If you want to have a better knowledge of what, uh, what happened in, in your house, obviously uh, acquiring the load core is not, is not sufficient. So you have to uh, interface the meter with a uh, higher uh, sample rate and uh, decide what to do with, uh, with obviously, your, your, your own data. Because we have to remember that uh, these data are used by the utilities in order to produce the invoice, in order to manage in a safety way the, the network, but these data are owned also by the single customers that can, be, uh, can, can decide to uh, use this data in order, for example, uh, be part of, uh, of a, a, a larger uh, functionality involving, for example, more than one user in order to provide, as I said, some uh, um, some services to the network. Meters, for this reason, Mitters and More developed also in one of the committees a complete certification process. And we're talking about uh, uh, certification for uh, finished products, but also certification for basic components. When we talk about finished pro uh, products, for example, we are talking about meters, so the complete stack. And when we are talking about the data concentrators, again, the complete stack, but uh, Meters and Morse offers also the possibility to have the certification of some parts, some specific components that can be used in different devices. And again, key points for the compliance certification is the availability, obviously, of uh, technical specifications, and we develop this kind of specification in a specific committee and the availability also of a, a testing tool that we call the meters and more test tool that is available for all the partners. We have also uh, some technical committees that uh, follow day by day the development uh, of, uh, of the uh, uh, procedures for the certification. And uh, we have update, we have periodical update of the procedures and the documentation. And by the way, uh, obviously there are also some uh, accredited uh, laboratories, in this case I represent one of them, that is CESI, where you can perform this kind uh, of uh, activities. Just a, a very simple presentation and just a, a, an example of the test bench for compliance testing. Uh, these schemas can be applied both to, for the certification of the final products uh, and the certification of uh, the, the, the components. And uh, as you can see, you, you have to start from uh, the physical layer. Obviously, you have to interface uh, uh, your, your system with uh, the proper uh, uh, line impedance stabilization network, uh, variable DC attenuator, power line coupling circuit, and so on. And then here, is represented the meters and more testing tool that enable you to perform such kind of certification. Uh, we decided internally in the association to um, accreditate some laboratories in order really to obtain uh, common results from this activity. So we decided not to let to each uh, uh, partner 
the availability to perform their own test because it's very important to have some results that are common results uh, coming from the same uh, procedures uh, and also some accredited laboratories that can guarantee uh, that all the operation can be done in the proper way. And let's come back to the Italian case because uh, I started with the involvement of the customer but uh, in Italy, you know, we started in 2000 with the first installation of the meters. Uh, we collected the results uh, of this project because we are in the second wave now. So there, are, there is an utility that is an L that started two years ago, the installation of the second generation of smart meters. So now we are talking about uh, some results that are not just perspective. They are real data coming from the summary of 15 years of operation of this system. And now we are in the second generation, so in, the, in the installation of the second generation of the meters. Uh, before uh, the installation of the second generation, the authority uh, gave some guidelines, uh, so some requirements for the new meters. Uh, among them, uh, there is also the, uh, it's mandatory to have uh, not only the first uh, communication channel to the utility, but uh, the meters uh, must have another communication channel that is called chain two, and this chain two but, uh, can be used in order to interface directly to the client. So all the meters installed in Italy from now on should allow the customer to communicate uh, through an independent channel to the meter, just to avoid uh, any kind uh, of uh, uh, interaction or problems caused by this second channel to the first one that is used for the remote reading. Through this channel, as I said, uh, it's possible to uh, allow a lot of different manufacturers. And uh, in Italy, we have right now different producers that implemented some uh, uh, devices that can be used uh, as Inom uh, gateway. And uh, in this case, uh, the meters uh, will be one of only one of the devices to be tested. Because obviously the meters will be the crucial and the central point that will allow to uh, exploit the data uh, collected. But this is uh, only one of the devices that must be tested because all the other devices must be tested together with the meters in order to prove the real interoperability because between this device and the enum gateways. Uh, as I told you, uh, uh, in Italy, we set up a specific committee uh, belonging to the Italian uh, uh, CEI that is uh, uh, in charge of developing uh, the protocol. Uh, Meters and MOS has been adopted as a physical and uh, data link layer for this protocol. And uh, the uh, application layer chosen for this application is the DLNS COSM, so fully uh, supported from the stack that uh, I, I, I show you. And uh, obviously, a lot of different use cases uh, has been developed. Uh, new use cases will be implemented in the, in the future, obviously, according to the requirement, not only of the utility, but also, for example, uh, the customer as and sort of the fourth partner that could be involved. Let's talk, for example, about aggregators, because uh, in parallel, there are some uh, uh, pilot projects uh, where the customers are aggregated uh, in order to uh, try to perform and to give uh, some ancillary service to the network. This is a separate project, but obviously they are going in parallel because one could be the basis for the other in the future. And uh, uh, as I told you, uh, Another important thing uh, is that uh, in Italy, it is not allowed for the utility to give uh, services directly to the customers, uh, just in order uh, uh, to prevent that the distributors could have uh, a position that allowed them uh, to be in, uh, in, uh, in, in a strength position for, uh, for giving this, such kind of services. So in Italy, uh, only third parties can give this kind of services to the final client. So the utility cannot be an aggregator, for example. And so, uh, again, much more important to have real complete interoperability because surely they will be different, different entities and they will play different role. But obviously they, they must have in common a protocol that uh, can be used in order to share the information. So just to conclude the presentation, 
We think that uh, a crucial role is assigned to the customer and will be assigned in the future. Meters and more, the idea of meters and more, of this association, is to be in the middle in order to support this kind of development. And uh, for this reason, uh, uh, as association, we developed uh, this kind uh, of, uh, of, of protocol. And uh, meters and more offer through its partners also compliance certification procedures and facilities in order to be completely independent. And also, in, uh, this is not just uh, uh, something that will happen in the future, but uh, this is something already realized in the last months in Italy. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm aware, uh, and I'll use Bitters and More for, for I think, since the, since the last, since the starting of the smart metering rollout. Uh, I remember uh, one or two years ago I was in Italy in a presentation of NL talking about the second generation of smart metering. I know you are, NL is already developing this. How is this linked to all these changes or all these uh, modifications, yeah. meters and more? Well, as I told you, uh, the new meter, that is the dopamine meter, will have two different uh, communication channels. The first one is the second generation and it, it implements again uh, at the protocol meters and more. Uh, on the other side, and this is uh, in uh, uh, Senelec band, C Senelec band, uh, in A Senelec band, the same meter uh, implement the so-called chain two with this different protocol. Um, you know that uh, uh, NL has chosen some meters that, that can be uploaded, so uh, you can upload a new firmware. So. In the first uh, installation uh, they did, uh, they already had some functionalities uh, supporting this uh, protocol. So right now you can use uh, some devices and we have in the boot also some, uh, some examples of this. So some uh, devices, some uh, home gateway are uh, uh, already available in the market. But in the near future, as I told you, it's possible also to enhance and develop uh, these uh, kind of devices and also the meters. Uh, updating uh, the uh, firmware of the, of the meters uh, and uh, obviously updating also the firmware of these uh, devices that uh, are at the customer premises. Yeah, very interesting because we know they have there are many meters, a large number of meters with meters and more in, in all around Europe and not only in Europe. So it's something innovative, let's say. Uh, yeah. I think again, uh, this uh, technology is going ahead in some, in some markets, which is quite good. Well, in fact, the NL was, or meters and more NL were one of the partners in, the, in Italy, and of course, this is uh, an experience that you earn. Uh, are there any other questions from the audience uh, about... Uh yeah. Um, uh, I have another question regarding Latin America, because uh, we know that PLC is a very good solution for good networks, like in Europe and so on. But what about the in Latin America? So uh, I know that you have some pilot, well, you know, NL has some pilots in Latin America. So there the network are totally different. How do you see PLC? Because we don't have uh, the expertise nowadays, we don't have, we will launch a pilot of thousand units next year. But do you have some information in advance? How do you say uh, that? Yes. Uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, I, I, in my presentation, I talked about uh, the interface between uh, the meters and the enom gateway. Okay, that's very important. Uh, and I think that uh, in any case, this could be something useful uh, uh, worldwide because, uh, you know, uh, probably the distance between the customer and the meter uh, is very, is very uh, so few meters. Uh, and so I, I guess that uh, this could work uh, wherever in the world. If we come back to your question, that is a more general question about meters, uh, uh, let me add that uh, uh, even in Italy, for example, for the generation, second generation of the meters, uh, the authority required uh, a double communication channel, one independent from the other. And so the new meters, the open meters, are equipped not only with the power line communication, but also with uh, another modem 
that for the backup or in the end they will be uh, almost equal uh, that uh, implements the 169 megahertz uh, so the same frequency that we have seen for the, 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 the gas meters in France and this is very important because they are two complementary way of communication and this could uh, allow you to reach really the 100% of the reachability for also announced capabilities when we talk about Latin America and even Brazil we know that uh, there are a lot of differences between the different network in Brazil. So if we are talking about, uh, for example, uh, Sao Paulo, the network in Sao Paulo is uh, quite close to the network uh, in, in Europe. If we talk about some other networks, uh, it's quite impossible to use power line. So uh, I repeat, I don't want to say we have a solution that is suitable for all the applications in the world. Surely this is a solution that is suitable for a lot of applications in the world. My suggestion is obviously to make some uh, assessment, the preliminary assessment, in order to understand uh, what, is, uh, uh, what can be implemented or not. Uh, in some cases, luckily, it's possible to use a lot of technologies. In some other cases, you have to exclude some of them. I, I heard in your presentation uh, we had the same experience, uh, not like meters uh, more, but like Chesi. In US, you have a uh, few customers uh, for its transformer, and so it is completely not uh, uh, not feasible, but uh, not fruitful uh, to use uh, to use power line because uh, you, in Europe you can you can reduce the order of magnitude uh, uh, because you have more than one uh, one hundred. Uh, customers for each transformer. When you have free, it's completely useless because you cannot reduce, even if the technology is working. You should think about power line on the medium voltage network instead of the low voltage network. So the message is we are proposing something that uh, surely uh, worked in a lot of network. This is one of the technology that can be used. This is a technology supported by now by many uh, partners uh, and surely there are some applications that we deem very uh, very uh, suitable for this kind uh, for this kind of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of protocol and again uh, for sure the interface between the meters uh, and uh, the home uh, could be one of them because you, you can just plug <laughs> your your device uh, and uh, without uh, any other issue related uh, for example, uh, to, 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 to the communication or where the, where the meter is located and so on and so forth. Uh, I didn't mention this, uh, but for example, uh, uh, from the security point of view, it's clear that you have uh, to uh, design uh, some, uh, um, some uh, procedures, uh, so some coupling procedures, uh, in order to be sure to have uh, the customer linked only to its own meter. Because obviously, when you, 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 you plug your device in the, in the, in the, in the network, uh, you could also access uh, the other meters, uh, the meters of other customers. And so obviously, we developed uh, a complete procedures in order to avoid this, uh, and so on and so forth. So for the security, there are some other issues. Uh. But it is just a proposal that can be evaluated, obviously, in order to be used. to use all these experiences because at the end uh, something is the paper and something else is the exper experience. Okay, thank you very much. Now I would like very quickly because uh, we are running out of time, uh, the speakers, I would like speakers to come up to the chairs for a, for a panel session. So please, I will try to speed up a little bit because my, my management, like five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> okay, ha ha I will have half a question. Because we are doing, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take a seat if you want. Uh. Okay, maybe, uh, yeah, so people can, like, as we are on Okay, so, sorry. Yes, please. At the end, there's one, sir. Yeah, but uh, because here, people cannot see you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, First of all, uh, before before asking any question, I don't know if any of the panelists, because I know we have been, been speaking about different issues and uh, you have been listening to each other, but maybe any of you would like to mention something about the other presentations or, or some comments about the, the overall session that you would like to uh, overlight? Or would you, would you like me just to start? Uh, I'm, I'm offering you uh, 30 seconds to say, to say some conclusion if you want, or 
I can start with the questions. Yeah, I was impressed by uh, the customer satisfaction and acceptance by uh, Iberdrola because you reach 19.9 uh, uh, rollout. So can you tell us a little more about the cooperation approach, pedagogical approach towards customers that, you, that led to this success? So the, the, th the first thing I think in, um, is uh, to have a mandatory rollout. So this is the key. Uh, because uh, there are some other examples like the UK. In the UK it is optional, so this is a nightmare. Because you try to, to phone to the customer and the customer say, oh, come on, this is optional, I don't care. I'm paying the same bill. So the first thing is in Spain to have the support of the government. This is the key. Uh, we send uh, some letters. And of course, the, the rental price of the meter uh, is, is uh, very small. So they are paying 0 0.5 euros for the dam meters, and they have to pay 0 0.8 euros monthly for the smart meters. So the, the cost is minimum for them. And in, you are offering them so uh, application web uh, they can uh, make a lot of things with the energy, so they say all benefits for that. That's the key. So lo low cost and many benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions or, or comments? No. I have a question to my colleague uh, from GRDF. Uh, do you do you have contact with your colleagues from NEDIS or EDF? Because um, if I was uh, a utility with gas meters, I will try, I know that you are different, but I will try just to emerge the two, the, the gas and the electricity meters in the same network or something like that. I don't know if it... Uh, the answer is yes. We had a lot, lot, lot of contacts with uh, EDDs. Uh, customers are experiencing uh, the rollout at the same time, so of course we have to uh, manage the, the parallel uh, rollouts. And uh, we have uh, good things and advice to uh, learn from uh, the, uh, the other company, always. Uh, so yes, we have a lot of contacts at uh, all levels, top, from top management to uh, uh, field management levels. And uh, then uh, the company, th these are two different companies. As you know, uh, metering is strategic because uh, it leads to the turnover of, <laughs> of the company for uh, DSO. So, uh, on strategic, uh, on a, a strategic topic, uh, you can't uh, rely on the other company for your transmission. So that's why we have two different, uh, completely uh, two different systems. Maybe add something because in Italy we have uh, uh, some big utilities, but we have also some small utilities. Um, and uh, we have an example uh, where a multi-utility, that is a multi-utility of the northern part of Italy, uh, combine the two and the results uh, are very good. So they have the same concentrators acquiring uh, the data from the smart meter in, uh, uh, for electricity and uh, the same concentrators equipped with a, a, a module, a radio module, RF module, 169, like, uh, like uh, the colleague said, and they acquire the data from the gas meters with the same data concentrators. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they started with the electricity meters. They had very good performances, almost 100% of reachability, and they kept this 100% after the installation of the radio modules, and they are almost 100% uh, also for the gas meters. I, I can just add that, uh, yes, Enedis and GRDF are covering 95% uh, of the, the French territory, but we, we have also small companies uh, delivering uh, services uh, as a DSO, small DSO for electricity and gas. And uh, yes, it's possible uh, when, you, when you manage electricity and uh, gas distribution to have the same system. Uh, I don't know if uh, it is the case in France, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a possibility. We are talking about the uh, new services, uh, starting from the devices already installed, from the protocols already used. I think this is very interesting, not repeating infrastructures, because at the end it's uh, inv investments and, and management of assets. Uh, I would like to ask also a question to, because I, I th thank you for doing my job, it's great. <laughs> uh, also, we like, for example, asking uh, Colin, for example, in this case, about what do you think will be the 
let's say, three big challenges for the coming years for utilities regarding the, uh, yeah, the smart metering, let's say, in general? Yeah, I think, you know, what I've, what I've heard, and I'm, I'm seriously impressed with all of the other speakers, uh, and especially talking through the number of consumers that are connected up with, with, with smart meters, and, and that's way more impressive than we have in the UK, where we are seriously lagging behind others. Um, the three, I mean, I think, you know, it, it's clear you've got to get the consumers on board and it's clear you've got to communicate to them the, the benefits. Uh, it, it, there are still examples, and I think even in the, the, uh, the mandated Spanish example, you know, consumers are probably still a little bit confused about what the real benefits are to them further down the line. I think clearly security, um, is, is a major concern and, and I know Mark talked about uh, how, how that was solved and, and equally I think what, what came up of serious interest as well was the amount of organisations that wanted access to the data. I think that highlights exactly a, a, an important point uh, about all of this you know and, and I guess we've all got the hope that our data is, is anonymised uh, and, and protected, but it's interesting to note how many, I apologize, I can't remember which, I think it was uh, from, from GRDF, where you, you, you opened up the data and, and the number of people that made requests for access to that data seemed to me to be huge. Thank you. I would like to pass the same, the same question to the next speaker. What do you think about the three big challenges uh, for the utilities in the coming years related to smart metering issues? From yeah. your point of view or from the point of view of your services? Exactly, I think that would be a question uh, for the utilities, but, <laughs> um, you know, NXP is a, semi is a semiconductor and a technology company there, and um, what I can see, and also being uh, wandering around here this hall and the, uh, um, what people are striving is, we're collecting a lot of data these days, right? And we have the technologies uh, for collecting the data. We have also the technologies for analyzing the data uh, in the cloud and actually then getting it back and, and, and pre-selecting it at the edge. So, and and uh, you know, our company is heavily involved in that, particular when it is on the edge or at the end nodes or a meter, making sure this data will become without latency and very cost efficient there. But what I'm hearing is, is a lot actually, well, what are we gonna do with this data and how are we gonna make, how are we gonna make money out of this, right? So we see this and I like that presentation here um, from, uh, um, from CDRF regarding the service business which are being starting and I think that's, that's really um, a big challenge and, and it's an, it is an opportunity at the same time to create this business there because here you need to engage with not only change your business model it's about engaging with other partners you need to open up because you cannot develop that right um, we are playing we're not only supplying here too in the in the energy sector we also a major supplier to the mobile phones and and uh, you know, this industry has, has learned that how to do that, how to opening it up to partner and delivering other revenue streams, uh, other selling their, their, their prime uh, product. So it's not three, but I think that's the one, uh, you know, how to monetize the data, what you get there and opening it up for services for partners is there. Good thing is there's technology also that supporting that and is addressing the security needs for that. Yeah. Thank you very much. I have many questions, but I think I will, I will do a last one because I think we are all now a bit tired. I can see the beer and something over there, so I don't want to waste more, more of your time. Uh, but I think because we're in, in a digitalization uh, hub and we didn't uh, talk a lot about big data and the use of the data and so on in the sense of uh, amount of information and also, let's say, smart information or new information that can be used for many for many issues, let's say, in this way. Also, there's a, this platform, this Amazon Web Service, and other different issues, and all this is, well, it's, it's, it's changing a lot, and it's, there's a lot of need of uh, knowledge there. But for example, any of you that want to, to answer, how, how do you see all the management of, of all these big data? Where are the challenges? Where are the barriers now? Or the way, or what do we have to learn 
or where to go with all this information. Maybe, Inigo, we can start from here, because I see you <laughs> are very active today. So regarding with the smart metering rollout, we have many, 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 many amount of data uh, coming every day. So at the beginning of the deployment, we didn't have the enough resources just to digest all this data. But now that we are close to the finalization of the deployment, we are making uh, many algorithms uh, regarding the data just to decrease the losses, uh, decrease the fraud, uh, analyze uh, anomalies in the meters, whatever. So um, uh, we are using data analytics tools for that. And I think um, it's, uh, it's so important just to to uh, read the meters, but also to have time enough to analyze all the data that is coming from the from the meters. Yes, I, I fully agree. Uh, as I mentioned, the, um, the physical solution, the radio solution, radio transmission is uh, reliable, simple, and uh, robust. And then uh, the challenge is to digest uh, a huge number of data. We have uh, 11 million, so 11 million of uh, indexes uh, every day. Uh, even more if uh, you get the service of uh, hourly uh, consumption, uh, you multiply by uh, 24. So uh, you have uh, to have uh, really good IT uh, teams and robust uh, IT systems to digest and also uh, secure because uh, people are very se sensitive to uh, security and confidentiality. And once you have that, you can play with the data and uh, uh, not to lose too much time. So go to the, the very efficient uh, services because the risk with data is to, uh, to work, to work and to lose time and not to get the, the benefit of this data. So then you have to have good algorithm to, uh, to go to the right uh, efficacy and the results for the customer. Yeah, l let me add something about uh, the experience we had because at the beginning, uh, you collect a lot of data usually. So you tend, uh, the, the trend at the beginning is to acquire as much data as you can. But uh, after uh, uh, thinking about uh, real functionalities, you tend to reduce the number of data that you, you collect. So now we have a booming. Uh, at the beginning, you have a, a booming of, of, of data. But then you realize that, for example, you can process some data locally and transmit uh, uh, to remote only some of them, because only some of them are useful. And so this is uh, what we have seen. So uh, in, in the beginning, you think about uh, really mm, terabyte, pentabyte of data. And then after uh, uh, really um, um, exploiting this data with some uh, uh, real functionalities, you tend to say, OK, I need this data at this time and so on. Also for the fruits, for example. You can collect whatever you want in terms of voltage, current, uh, not only load profiles and so on. And then you realize that it's not necessary to do this uh, every second. Uh, you can uh, simply sample uh, at uh, some uh, specific period of time the data and you can obtain the same results. Or uh, if you want to perform some uh, disaggregation of the loads, uh, obviously you can at the beginning collect a lot of data and then you can realize that uh, you need less data than uh, the data that are available and so locally you can process this data. The Inom device could uh, also make a filter in order to avoid to transmit uh, thousands of, of, of pentabytes to, to remote. I, I think, though, um, there's a definite uh, opportunity here for, for software sort of products that can, can do the sort of algorithmic definition and, and, and refinement and honing using things like machine learning, neuro-linguistic programming, uh, artificial intelligence. You know, all of that capability just ensures that we can use the data in the, in the most effective way, for sure. Okay, thank you very much. I think with this we can finalize the panel. Uh, I would like to thank all the speakers for their time and their very interesting presentations, really very interesting today and different also, which is, I think, enriches the hub a lot. Thank you so much to all the attendees that have been here for the last minutes of these uh, presentations. And, uh, well, thank you very much.